The meeting will convene at 6.30 p.m. and visitors may obtain a request to be heard from from staff for any presentation they may have for the meeting. In accordance with policy, the request to be heard forms must be submitted to the secretary within the first five minutes of the board meeting in order to be heard at this meeting. Agenda items are subject to be changed at the discretion of the board president. Please attend the entire meeting to assure you are able to hear any discussion. to Section 841411 of the Nebraska Statutes, the next regular meeting of the Board of Education of Douglas County School District 0001 and the Board of Educational Service Unit number 19 will be held on Wednesday, September 5th at 6.30 p.m. in the board meeting room of the Teacher Administrative Center, 3215 Cummins Street. The agenda will be kept current and available for the public 
for public inspection in the office of the Secretary of the Board of Education at the administrative building during regular working hours. Pursuant to Section 8414.12 of Nebraska statutes, the public is hereby informed that a current copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is posted in the board meeting room on the north wall. Please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Vice President Merica will lead us in the OPS vision and mission statement. All right. First up is our vision, every student, every day prepared for success, and our mission. Omaha Public Schools prepares all students to excel in college, career, and life. Thank you. Roll call, please. Cassidy. Here. Godding. Hallman. Here. Merica. Present. Perlman. Here. Ryan. Present. Scanlon? Present. Smith? Here. Snow? Here. Eight present. Mrs. Godding uh, informed uh, the entire board that she had a prior work uh, commitment. I will entertain a motion to excuse Mrs. Godding from tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Scanlon, second by Mrs. America. Ms. America, roll call please. Scanlon? Aye. Smith? Aye. Snow? Aye. Cassidy? Aye. Holman? Aye. America? Aye. Perlman? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Eight aye. Motion carries. Moving on to school spotlight with Mrs. Monique Farmer. Good evening, Board President Snow, members of the board, and Superintendent Dr. Cheryl Logan. We are pleased tonight to present Benson High Magnet and North High Magnet as this evening's OPS Proud Spotlight. In July, Benson and North High Magnet competed in the World Cup China Tournament in Shanghai. Benson team members include Zach Dahlgren, Tanner Sass, and Chris Schroeder. These students competed in the VEX game called In the Zone, where students have to build robots to move and stack cones. Benson won the tournament and also received the honor award. This is the highest award a team can receive. To earn the award, students have to score well in the competition and interview process with the judges. North High Magnet team members, Calvin Green, Cole Vask, Malik Jones, were all named as finalists in the VEX game in the zone. Students Jacob Gardner, Arturo Gallegos, Zaragoza, and Colin Vickery won the THINK Award. The THINK Award is presented to a team that has developed and effectively use quality programs as part of their strategy to solve the game challenge. We salute these teams tonight for their accomplishments, and at this time I would like to welcome Benson High Magnet Principal Tom Wagner and North High Magnet Principal Gene Haynes and the coaches for the students to the podium for remarks. Um, Tom Wagner wanted to talk a lot, but I told him I would take over and kind of <laughs> tell you all about it. Um, we were lucky enough this year when they take the top five in the nation to, um, it's the U.S. Open, uh, the open event where you can use any parts, uh, pieces, and things on your robot, kind of similar game. Uh, Omaha North and us, we were lucky. We went to Shanghai this year. Um, we did great at the tournament. It was a real cultural immersion. What the kids will tell you about, we stayed at a dorm for uh, four days. We got to, um, not only during the day did we do like calligraphy, we did kung fu, we did um, a language. They were teaching us a language, but then in, we were eating at the cafeteria with them. At night we were um, playing uh, soccer and different things out on their field and stuff. So it was a really unique um, opportunity. Also, um, another 
great thing was that um, they had one day where it was just they partnered us with the uh, Chinese students, so every American student was with the Chinese student, and then we had to work together with them and come up with a, a robot for a different competition. So it was really neat to see the bonding and kind of the talking and stuff that, you know, that a lot of people miss out on, you know, here because a lot of things are real competitive, but there as well, uh, cooperative, and it was a great learning experience for everyone. Jeremy? <laughs> um, any questions? Uh, if the gentlemen could uh, introduce themselves, uh, what grade they're in and what school they attend, and uh, give us a little bit of something that, because we weren't there, a little bit inside of the competition and the entire trip there. Okay. Uh, I'm Zach Dahlgren. I go to Benson High. I'm a senior this year. It's my fourth year doing robotics. And uh, the, the thing that I... Uh, I found different more than the uh, U.S. teams and what we run more in the U.S. is the competition. It was since it was a lot smaller, it, it was a really unique idea for them to have the uh, smaller kids and the high schoolers and the middle schoolers there for when we collaborated and did a IQ, uh, which is just like the smaller version of the VEX competition so it's like Legos and stuff it's kind of like Legos but uh, we did like the three hour t competition and then we competed with it after that it was really unique kind of uh, bonding with the kids that we were paired with and then creating something just out of the ordinary and then just driving with them and everything because you have to switch off so it was a partner drive more than anything and it was really unique working with them and everything like that so thank you my name is Chris Schroeder. I am a sophomore. Um, this would probably be my second year of robotics. And um, in China, I didn't know much about robotics, uh, but I was still able to participate in the competition, which I really enjoyed. Um, I got to learn a lot from Tanner and uh, Zach that I didn't know much about since I was only in robotics for one year. Um, it was very surprising that Mr. Troxel had chosen me to go to China. Um, hey, maybe you're, you're blue chip, you know? It's where these guys started the same way, so that's why you're building for the future. Building the bench. There we go. So I learned quite a lot, and I'm hoping I'll be able to go again soon. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> I'm Tanner Sassy. This um, will be my senior year. Um, I have been in robotics for three years. Um, for me, what stood out to me at the tournament was, you know, the fact that I went to China for <laughs> robotics. It was the coolest thing ever, you know. It was such a great opportunity. And, you know, not only did you have high schoolers there, you had middle schoolers. And, you know, that to me stood out because that just really... Um, you know, it's just, I don't even know how to describe it, you know, it's just so cool. Um, yeah, um, it was a really fun time, and I'm sure Cole and uh, Malik have other great things to say. Hello, I'm Malik Jones, and I'm an 11th grader at North, and this is my, this, this was four years of me doing VEX, going into my fifth year, and... At China, I enjoyed the classes that they gave us there, including the, we took a language class, a calligraphy class, and um, a judging class that taught us more about the way that they judge at China. And we took them with the Chinese kids as well, so we got to learn more with them since they also sp spoke English. So we got to bond with them since we teamed up with them, like Zach said, in the IQ. And I enjoyed the judging class because they taught us more about how they made videos and revealed their robots to the judges and their judging interview instead of just talking about the robot to give them a better idea. So that was a good look in how they do things in China. And then I also enjoyed the language class because it taught us uh, a little bit of the Chinese language and we actually used it, me and Cole, to introduce ourselves in our judging interview to the Chinese judges. So it was a great experience there. Awesome. I'm Cole. I'm a senior this year at North, and I've been doing robotics for five years. Uh, something that I found really cool about China was that the cultural exchange amongst the students was a lot of fun. Like, as Malik mentioned, we 
the Chinese students said they're their part of the judging interview that when we were with them, they put they said their part in English and we did our introduction in Chinese because they taught us Chinese in our classes. I thought that was a lot of fun and playing soccer and whatnot with the students was just a blast. Uh, I really would like to go back if I could, but I'm a senior, so. <laughs> Maybe you can go back as a coach next year or this year. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, colleagues of, um, you guys have any? Mr. Pullman. First, congratulations. Sounds like a great experience. Uh, question I have is, what was the goal for your robots, or was it, did everyone, did every team have a particular objective, or did it leave it up to you to be as creative as you wanted to be? Uh, Zach Dahlgren. Uh, the main goal, I mean, the game itself is pretty much the same thing for everyone, but some bots are made differently for some goals in the game itself, because there's multiple things you can do within a game. But I think everyone's, uh, everyone's goal at the competition was just to get as far as you could, but uh, also to learn from the Chinese teams it, themselves, like what their style of building and what they do, uh, what they focus on more than what we do, because a lot of the stuff in the U.S. is uh, a lot of the building and stuff like that, but a lot of them over there, it's a lot of the programming and stuff, and there's different programs you can use, and they used a lot of uh, the more advanced programming and stuff like that, so it was really cool to see that, and their, go their goals were a lot more uh, different for, like, programming-wise, and ours was more building, I guess you could say, so... Dr. Holman. First of all, congratulations to you all. Um, sound like just an amazing opportunity and an, alert, an amazing uh, learning opportunity as well. So as far as your robots, did you have just like one robot or were there multiple or did you guys work together as, a, as one whole team to create your robots? So it was me and Cole as one team and each team only has one robot. So each school had, our school had two robots because we brought two teams and then Benson just had one robot. For okay, team. nice. Mr. Scanlon. I guess congratulations to all of you. Um, I don't know if you guys all understand this, but you went to China. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. I mean, I think you put it best when you were just like, the Chinese experience was amazing. I mean, I, I think when I was in high school, the farthest I went was DC, Washington, DC. And you guys were on another continent. And um, I mean, just, it's amazing what you guys just did. I mean, that's fantastic. Um, I, I commend you guys on going out there and representing Omaha Public Schools and America. Um, that's huge. So I guess I'd just like to hear what you guys are interested in doing uh, post high school and, and what you'd like to do career-wise. Um, after high school, I would like to do something with engineering, preferably mechanical engineering. So I have, I take uh, engineering classes all four years so far in high school. So I started out with POE, just intro to engineering, and now this year I'm taking a civil engineering class. So I'm really interested in engineering and robotics in general. Um, what my, what my uh, goals are for college and, and then uh, after college would be something in the line of like the trade for like shop teaching or uh, like construction management. Uh, my main goal for shop teaching is I want to be a shop teacher so that I can come back at, to Omaha and ho uh, coach a robotics team. So that'd be nice. You're hired. <laughs> Um, so in the future, I'm hoping to become a band director or an elementary teacher. Um, I was more into band, I guess, but I mean, still, I loved going to China with robotics and <laughs> it, it almost changed my mind about that, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, I plan to go into software development or computer science in general. I'm not really sure yet. Um, I've been going to North with a focus on software engineering and <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> For me, honestly, I'm going to tell you straight up, I don't know. But um, <laughs> oh, most likely I'm thinking somewhere in the engineering field. Um, 
you know, just robotics and stuff like that. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Cassidy. So I am an aunt to several nephews that do robotics. So I have been to several robotics tournaments and, and matches. And I'll tell you what, I was skeptical the first time I had to go to one. I was kind of like, what? What is this? But it is, if you have not gone to one, it is amazing. It is, you're, you're not bored. Um, I will say to any parents that might be here, though, they do get rather long. So I want to commend all your parents for all those tournaments they've probably gone to. Um, but they're, they're, um, they've changed my mind, all the ones that I've been to. That I've been pleasantly surprised at how much I understand, even though I'm not sure that I do. Um, but if you have not gone to a robotics tournament, you should. I invite you all to go to one. They are, they are awesome. And as you said, cool, <laughs> we'll use your term. Um, again, just congratulations. What a remarkable experience for all of you. And I hope that you realize that robotics can really take you far. Um, it's, I kind of sometimes will, I, I think people don't know where to categorize robotics, but I look at it almost as a sport within high school. It's just as challenging and competitive as all the sports that we, we have in OPS, and um, stick with it. It's, it's a great, I'll call it a sport. I will call it a sport. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh, just touching on that, I just wanted to mention, um, at Benson, we just recently made robotics a sport, and we can actually letter in it. So just thought I'd share that with you guys, which is wow. pretty, really yeah. cool. Yeah. I have it on my letterman jacket already. I think you have a challenge, I Mr. Haynes. <laughs> Dr. Logan. First of all, I, um, I want to echo the board's comments about how proud we are of you, um, and not just in here in Omaha, but to Mr. Scan Mr. Scanlon's comments in the whole uh, country, in the United States, you've represented us so well. I also want to challenge you, though, because I know that you had the uh, luck of having competitors that spoke your language. And to be thinking about if you had gone to China and there was no one there who spoke English, what the experience might have looked like. And to hopefully that perhaps your opportunity to go there um, spurred you on to learn a second or a third language. Uh, Chinese is a pretty cool one to learn because uh, one out of six people walking the planet uh, speak that language, uh, so I hope that um, that encourages you to expand even beyond the engineering, robotics, and music uh, that you like so that uh, you um, have another skill to add to your, uh, to your, to your, to your toolkit. <laughs> okay, so funny story. Um, <laughs> our robotics competitions, we have this thing called judging. And what happens is you go up to a judge and you kind of explain, you know, your process through your build, your program, you know, what you've been doing as a team and how you've made your robot better. Now, <sighs> okay, let me go back a bit. <laughs> okay, earlier this year, um, I'm not sure if you guys knew, but the Chinese teams came to America. Um, so we, we kind of established a couple friendships there. And so um, one of the kids there, um, uh, his name was John. Um, and John spoke English very well. And so I wanted to impress the judge because we were supposed to speak in Chinese, kind of like what Cole and Zach and Malik mentioned about the classes. Um, and so I go up to the judge um, and I'm like, you are beautiful. Um, because John told me that what I said in, um, because I said it in Mandarin. I forgot what I said. I don't, I didn't remember. Um, so I thought I was saying, how are you today? So, um, <laughs> that wasn't really great. So I just keep on repeating it, you know, I'm just like, why is she's not saying good, bad or anything? Um, so we all thought that was kind of funny. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> She probably thought she had a crush on her, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I, I heard that you guys did bring a robot to demonstrate for us. Yeah. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, we brought our team, the Benson team's robot. Can, we, can we put it here in the middle? We also brought some 3D printed. Like, awesome. Of wow.
Only the women. Thank you so much. Oh, I think the the long part is the not the ear. There we go. Yeah. Thank you guys on this. It's a great start for the school year. You guys demonstrating this robot. Um, real quick before you demonstrate, how long did it take you guys to build this? How long did it take you to? Wow. Yeah, it, it's, it's a bunch of okay. So kind of explaining this while Zach gets this set up. Um, so this blue thing that you're seeing here in the middle is called a mobile base. And um, the yellow things around it are called cones. Now, the objective of the game is, you know, you stack the cones on the mobile base and then you try to score it in the 5 point, 10 point, 20 point zone. Um, or you can also stack on a stationary goal. Um, so it looks like we're connected here, and we'll kind of demonstrate. Um, so Um, so, it's just something to touch on. Um, I'm sure you guys are probably wondering if, if there was any problems during the trip. Um, and, you know, one, one of the problems that we had, uh, just to share with you, is, you know, um, getting the robot to China and back from China. Um, and, you know, during that flight, our robot went through one heck of a beating. Um, so, what you're seeing right now is not what it would have been, um, but... <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. So, um, and it can usually get about yeah. 15 to 16 cones stacked on the, the blue mobile base in <coughs> here. The mobile base itself weighs about 4 to like 4.4 4 pounds, and you just lift that up and then stack on top of that, and it gets about like 15 to 16 cones stacked on top of that. Wow. All tasks around. <laughs> I like that. Well, again, thank you so much, gentlemen. Everybody, let's give these fine men a round of applause. And if you guys could, we would love to shake your hand because you guys are the future um, and congratulate you on your endeavor and success in the future as well as your coaches. And then we can take a picture right here in the middle as well. Congratulations. Thank you so much. One more. One, two, three. Thank you. 
Just to let you guys know, my birthday's in January, and I would love to have one of those robots. <laughs> I, I have a good friend, Mr. Ray, that will cut the check for those robots. He's a very good sponsor. He could, he'll, he'll help on that. Uh, moving on to uh, Board and Superintendent Communications, the Treasurer's Support, Connie Kanoki. I'd like to submit for your review the financials for the month of July, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Superintendent Communications, Dr. Logan. Good evening, everyone. Last week, we opened our schools for our 53,000 students. It was a successful opening. While I was able to visit 22 schools last week, all schools were visited by at least one member of the district leadership team on the first day of school. I would like to thank all of our 8,000 employees for all that they did to ensure a successful opening. A super special shout out to our buildings and grounds personnel, our building custodians and engineers for ensuring that our schools were ready to receive our students. Another shout out to Travis Salas and the transportation team uh, and their partners. I will share more in my presentation a little later in the meeting. The board, having recently approved the project manager for phase two um, of the bond, um, we have started working internally for on timelines, and by mid-September we'll be able to submit uh, the timeline for phase two of the bond. I look forward to sharing more in the coming weeks. Recently, the first PROCOM meeting, which is a collaboration between the school district and OEA, was held about two weeks ago. This collaboration allows for problem solving between OEA and the district around interest, around issues of interest to its members. Today, unfortunately, we experience power outages in about 12 of our schools. Thanks to our school principals and school teams for shepherding our students and parents through the outages today. The final school to be back online was Sherman Elementary School. Mary Greiger, a new principal, handled her first emergency with style and grace. Kudos to Principal Greiger and the staff of Sherman Elementary School. Another thank you to Tammy Yarman and her team for ensuring that all students had breakfast and lunch despite varying levels of power available to schools. The last item for today is a vignette about something that happened in a school last week. Last week, a kindergartner at one of our elementary schools was asked, do you like your teacher, your new teacher? And the kindergartner responded, yes, I really like her, but I haven't seen her dark side yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you, thank that particular kindergartner because <laughs> First of all, I don't know where at age five he knows about a dark side, but uh, I want to thank that youngster for uh, helping me and all the people that I have shared that story with for just uh, enjoying the joy that is to be in a school. Our, our children are bright, engaging, smart, and sometimes they are just downright funny. And uh, that's what brings all of us who are here who, have, who currently work in schools or have worked in schools back every day for a story like that um, and to work on behalf of those students. Thank you. This concludes my report this evening. Thank you, Dr. Logan. Moving on to board member communications, Dr. Holman. Good evening, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to welcome all of our students, all of our staff and families who have made this school year a successful start. Um, welcome back to you all. Um, last week, on the first day of school, I attended uh, Northwest High School bright and early in the morning, about 7, 10, I believe it was. and. They had uh, the most awesome welcome back for all the students, and they were all in the, had all the staff like in the foyer of the, of the building. It had music playing, and as the students were walking in, the little they were just 
some of them very concerned and kind of confused and not sure what was going on because as all the students are walking in, we're all clapping, hey, welcome back, hi. And the kids are kind of walking in with their heads <laughs> down, kind of hiding. And one of the girls like, I'm so confused. And you can just see the confusion on their face because they just weren't used to being celebrated in that manner and um, just being welcomed back to school in that way. So um, it just goes to show that our students do need that attention and they appreciate it. And we even had a couple of parents come through that were also a little bit embarrassed to walk through. But it was completely awesome. And Mr. Lee was dancing with some of the students down the aisle. And it was just awesome. And so um, kudos to Northwest staff. And um, I look forward to making visits to the rest of my buildings this week. So I'm looking forward to that. And then finally, um, I wanted to give a congratulations to our uh, board president, Mr. Mark Snow who was just recently appointed to the Council of Urban Boards of Education, which is a part of the National Association of School Boards. And so congratulations uh, to you, Mr. Snow, for being appointed to the steering committee. Thank you. I appreciate you. it. Dr. Holman nominated me, so <laughs> she actually made me seem pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Cassidy. OK, so I have a good kindergartner story. Okay. <laughs> First of all, um, kind of kudos, or, uh, to reiterate what uh, Dr. Holman said, I want to talk about the first couple days of school. It seems like everything pretty much went smooth. Um, kudos to the transportation department um, specifically, as, uh, student transportation and our own OPS division head by, uh, mm -hmm. by Mr. Sellis. Mm -hmm. um, my student's bus driver is phenomenal and aside from today, He's been um, on time, which we're going to, the rain, boy, I bet all of them were just, it was a tough day today. But kudos to you guys. It's been a great start. Um, I also want to acknowledge um, the kickoff that Dr. Logan and team all put together. Um, I, I believe it was, I guess, the last, not this Saturday, but the Saturday before, mm -hmm. Saturday before school. Um, I attended that, and it was a great celebration, just full of positive um, reinforcement for the kiddos to get ready to go back to school. It was for five different schools that kind of surround the uh, TAC building here. And it sounds like next year it's probably slated to be a little bit bigger. But um, my kindergartner, if you, if you had the pleasure of attending this event, um, Dr. Logan had um, a signifying the start of the school year with ringing school bells. And she had about four or five students ring school bells, ring a school bell with her. And when we got home later, my um, soon to be kindergartner, she said, well, I guess we have to go to school, Mom, because Dr. Logan rang the bell. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. But it did even help my children to get a little bit more in the spirit of headed back to school. It's not always the most fun for every student, but um, it was a great kickoff, and I'm looking forward to it becoming even bigger and um, expanding to the rest of our schools next year. So thank you. Mr. Scanlon. I would just like to echo the uh, the back to school events. Um, that really does help. I think uh, um, it, it eases your kids' um, apprehensions about going back to school, and it, it really just um, you know it's it's an hour, hour and a half. Uh, I, ours was on Monday before school started, and it, it really uh, kind of got the kids um, re-energized to get back into school and and kind of take the edge off as far as uh, being nervous. Uh, so I appreciate that OPS does that. Uh, another um, meeting that I attended was on uh, August 10th. It was a uh, executive council bond discussion and well, I guess uh, bond planning meeting. And it, it um, sitting in it just shows you, yes, we passed a bond and um, you know, we had to go out to the voters, and they're very generous to to uh, pass that. But that's the easy part. Now we got to get into the planning. We get, get got to get into the coordination. And with this second phase, I think different from the first phase is going to be the fact that we've got two new high schools, which are um, gain a lot more attention uh, from the community, from the media, and everything, and the. The uh, planning that goes into that uh, is a lot higher level than, than the elementary schools that we had in, in the uh, first phase. Um, so I, I, I really appreciate all the information and all the uh, planning and coordination that was going on in that meeting at a higher level that they were starting that process. So I think we can um, be successful as, an, as, a dis, as a school district in the second phase as we go into uh, larger projects. 
uh, not as many, but larger, uh, um, kind of more uh, high-profile projects that I think are, are um, you know, we're, we're getting to where we need to be uh, starting that process early on. So I, I appreciate everybody that was at that meeting and starting to have those conversations. So I think we're, we're in a good, good place moving forward with the uh, second phase of the bond. Thank you for attending that meeting, Mr. Scanlon. Mr. Smith. Um, I had the opportunity to attend a couple of back to school nights and um, they were really amazing. I went to Belvedere's and went to a third grade classroom and the teacher decorated the room. Um, she said third grade, how sweet it is. And so all the kids who came in got a little bag of cotton candy and they just were full of sugar. So they were really excited about that. Um, and so they had a really good kickoff. And then I uh, got a chance to go to Macmillan's as well. Um, and Principal Talbot was doing an excellent job in engaging the parents on uh, some of the expectations for the school year. And that was one of the first times that I've ever been um, at a school where the, the parents were involved, the, the principal was there um, leading discussion. And after that, the kids were running up to the principal and giving the hugs like, yeah, we can't wait for a school to start. So it was a, a really good environment to be in. So she, she did a really good job. Also, we, um, we did dedicate uh, Florence Elementary and the Boys and Girls Club of the Midlands um, before uh, they, they started school. It was a really nice kickoff. We did a ribbon cutting. Um, Dr. Uh, Logan was there. And um, also this past weekend, the Benson Swing Choir did a car wash. And then I happened to, to stop by. And as they were washing cars, they were singing show tunes and th dancing and stuff like that. So they had a really good time. And I just uh, want to say, you know, con continue to support your schools in your area. Thank you. Vice President, Ms. Merica. All right, I need to give a shout out to um, Brian High. They, since I've been on the board, have allowed me to come to the first day of school to kind of welcome the freshman class um, into the Brian alumni family and had a good time talking to them about getting involved and the fact that we all start high school with a clean slate and what should happen in middle school doesn't follow you to high school. So you can kind of chart your own path from there. Um, and it was also really exciting to see all the bond work that has happened at Bryan over the summer, as well as the new classrooms that are part of their urban ag and transportation distribution logistics um, expansions. And what I was most excited about, I told him I was going to tell a story now. Um, if you're not familiar, Bryan High School started off in the building that's now Bryan Middle School. And then eventually when the school outgrew that building, Bryan High School and Northwest were constructed at the same time. And legend has it that the chairs that were, the auditorium chairs that were supposed to go to Northwest were delivered to Brian. Because when Brian opened, it had red orange chairs throughout the auditorium. They were there when my mom was there. They were there when my cousins were there. They were there when I was there. Um, they are finally replaced and all the chairs in the auditorium match each other and no one has to worry about a seat breaking when they sit down on it. Um, you, and it was, Turquoise. yes, thank you. So thank you voters of Omaha and <laughs> everyone associated with the bond and Dr. Turnquist because it is just thrilling to walk into the auditorium and have a space that we can be proud of um, and that our students can walk in and have ownership of and have the correct colors too. Vice President America is the Brian historian, so FYI. Um, second generation. Second generation, yes, indeed. Uh, up next is public comment. Uh, we have two speakers who have submitted requests to speak forms. The board has adopted policy 8346, which provides public comment for a period of one hour. That same policy limits individual speakers to a maximum of five minutes. We ask that you respect that time limit. Mr. Ray will let you know when you have one minute remaining and when you have 30 seconds remaining. If you are in need of an interpreter, please let Mr. Ray know and one will be provided for you. If the subject of your public comment is related to a particular student or staff member, we ask that you not mention the student or staff member by name and instead provide that information to Mr. Ray. He will assist us in the look into those types of details for you. If you do not get an opportunity to speak and would like to submit any written commentary, please provide it to Mr. Ray. He will make sure each member of the board gets a copy. As a reminder, we ask that you please spell your name and state your address before you begin your public comment. It is now 7:10. Our first speaker is Susie Anderson. <clears throat> All 
My name is Susie Anderson, president of SEIU Local 226. We represent all of support staff in OPS. I live at 50, uh, 6560 North 33rd Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 68112. Uh, phone <coughs> number is 402-510-0657. Uh, spelling of my name, S-U-Z-Y-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. -S Good evening, Dr. Logan and board members. I'm here tonight to talk about the past, the present, and the future. In the past, and, I'd be, and I'm referring to before Mr. Evans was superintendent, we rarely ever had a problem with our contracts, our relationships with the district, and the treatment of our employees. We had our problems, but we always seemed to come to a fair conclusion of any issues that we had. It was not perfect, but it it seemed to work well and employees had great morale and loyalty back then. We could leave meetings from seeing Dr. Huber and Dr. Barty with a handshake on both sides that would promptly, promptly take care of the problem that we had just talked about. We never had to record them because their actions and their words were trustworthy. Dr. Huber would have never conducted our negotiations so unfairly like it is happening in the present. In the past, the district was one team, not several teams. Our district was more like a family taking care of all our children in OPS as a team. Now in the present, I mean as in when Mr. Evans was superintendent, the district changed drastically and not for the better. Our new school board could not get along, but yet we teach our kids to get along. They don't care about loyalty or morale throughout our district. Everything is done behind closed doors without any input from any other parties. Support, staffs are, support staff is, are treated as if we are just a number on the check. There's no unity, no loyalty, and the morale is gone. The present. I hope Dr. Logan being here, changing attitudes <clears throat> and outlook for our district will change. I believe we can bring our district back on top like it used to be, but that will take teamwork, trust, and transparency from the district, which we do not have right now. We all know that Local 226 is not happy about the contract issue because it was totally unfair and uncalled for to negotiate like you did. About the 10-month, 12-month pay issue, again, we are extremely unhappy at, uh, because of that. All this is done has taken away any loyalty that was left and there is no morale. If you wanted employees to just come to work and do their jobs and go home, then that's what you'll have. You don't, <clears throat> you don't have the support staff to continue to take care of our kids as they always did. Have them, <clears throat> things need to be changed. When we become so shorthanded that we cannot take care of our kids, I would say you might want to take a look at how the employees were treated in the last five years. I know you all believe that there's, these are the only jobs we could find, but I will let you know that we have more people with more degrees than some of you that sit on that board. We have chosen these jobs for various reasons, but the biggest reason is that our staff love our kids and will do anything for them. I know the teachers buy things for the kids, but so do we. I myself have bought clothing, toys, food for several of our kids in, in our buildings. And then we have the wonderful thing, time clocks. They don't work half the time. Every day we are filling out papers because the time clocks is having intermittent problems again. One minute. You said that this would not cost our school district anything and that it would save money. I beg to differ. You had to buy all the tablets, the covers, the stands, the software. All this is doing is creating animosity every morning when everybody is standing there trying to get clocked in on time, which we never get clocked in on time because it doesn't work and it's very frustrating. This is going to be a total disaster when our checks come out on the 24th. You just don't understand. You should not play with people's money when they don't make $20,000 a year anyways. And I would like to also say that I feel sorry for two sets of people in the school district right now, and that would be payroll department and our timekeepers in our buildings. They're, half of them haven't been trained correctly. They don't know what they're doing. Plus, now they have to take over all this extra work from a time clock system that doesn't work, and people 
being frustrated with them on a daily basis. Thank you. Our next speaker is Cheryl Richardson. Cheryl Richardson, C H E R Y L R I C H A A R D S O N. I live at 10316 Hilltop Road. And I want to say good evening, President Snow, board members, and Superintendent Logan, Dr. Logan. I want to thank you for selecting Jacobs to oversee the 2018 bond. I have worked them worked with them as part of the CBOC committee overseeing the 2014 bond and where I have been impressed with their work ethics, their willingness to go beyond what was required of them, and hope I will be able to continue working with them on the 2018 bond. Thank you again for selecting Jacobs. Our next item on our agenda, well that ends our public comment section. Our next comment, uh, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. I will now entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda that is before us. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Ryan, second by Mr. Smith. Any abstentions? Hearing none, roll call please. Smith? Aye. Snow? Aye. Cassidy? Aye. Hallman? Aye. America? Aye. Perlman? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Scanlon? Aye. Eight aye. And carries. Moving on to information item, there, there is no um, action item on the agenda tonight, so moving on to J2A, uh, update from Dr. Cheryl Logan. Routes that um, are receiving, we're receiving calls about, and you're able to say 
to see that um, drivers, I'm sorry, that received less calls. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dixon. And then um, the parent call, call themes were mostly around uh, updated routes, confirming routes, and then address updates. And so that's a positive uh, for us. And, and then, of course, we can always, there always are some upgrades. Um, also this year, we did have uh, several new principals. Um, they are listed there. And I do want to make sure that we shout out Mary Greiger again, a brand new principal on her fourth day. She has a power outage. She didn't get her power back until, I want to say it was like 2 o'clock, 2.30. And not only that, she had live wires down in her neighborhood. And so we were able to, she informed us of that. And uh, thanks to Lisa Utterback and her team for making sure that the uh, OPD got there. We were very concerned about dismissal and students walking home around live wires. Um, now it turned out o, uh, OPPD and OPD all arrived. Sorry for all the P's and the D's, but um, so we were uh, fortunate that we were able to do that, but more fortunate that she pointed that out to us because throughout the day nobody else had pointed that out, but we made a, a phone call to her. So um, that it is remarkable, um, and she um, was just delightful throughout the day. Everybody who spoke with her said that she was just great. I got a chance to talk with her just for a second, um, but she uh, did a great job. And then also, Dr. Nero, I want to uh, make sure that she is also highlighted. Uh, I was at the school uh, day one, and the cafeteria uh, uh, person said um, that um, the, 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 she t takes the names uh, for all the students. She, she's been there 18 years and said it was the smoothest opening that she um, had. And I will say, the kindergartners were amazing. Now, I did show a lot of kids how to open a milk carton because I wouldn't open it for them. They had to learn. But um, it, was, uh, it was remarkable. And to all of those um, fine principals, we just uh, are really fortunate to have such fine professionals leading um, our schools. Uh, some opportunities for improvement uh, on opening are improved communications between departments. This is not really probably groundbreaking. Uh, this is just an opportunity as we spoke to uh, our teams, having more opportunities earlier on in the process. Uh, when we're thinking about April, um, in April, when we start thinking about, well, we actually start thinking about the, ne the, the new year and next month. But <laughs> uh, when we are doing some of those hard details in, uh, to, to have more uh, cross-communication and cross-functionality is something that we look forward to uh, between. And then the timeliness of completion for some punch list items. Some things are from our school district things that we are making uh, some improvements in buildings, and some are uh, part of uh, construction that's going on. And just having an opportunity to make sure that uh, we, we do that. I've spoken with uh, the representatives um, from Jacobs. They agree that this is an issue. As a person who opened a brand new building, I know this is an issue. Uh, and it's, it's not, not that any, everybody is working hard. It's we have to look at the timelines to make sure the timelines are reasonable for us opening uh, schools so that they are really ready to receive uh, students. But again, building, grounds, maintenance, everybody, um, our construction companies, our project manager, um, uh, it was, we're all working. Um, I saw our project manager every day for about seven days and his beard just getting, got, he was first, he started out with a little scruffy and now look at him, he's over there, he's almost got a full beard. Sorry about that, Mr. Summers. Uh, but, um, but I do appreciate the fact that nobody was taking it lightly. It's just an area of growth for us and uh, we know that we can do better in terms of making sure those items, we push back uh, those items or have a timeline that is reasonable based on how many days we have, how many real work days we have between the end of the school year when we're doing a summer project, the start of the school year, and then adding in the potential for weather delays. And so we can, um, we can probably do uh, a little better. Um, this is not remarkable for, uh, for this, this district. This happens around the country. We just want to make sure that we are ready to uh, receive our students in the best way, um, the way that families expect for their children to be received um, in schools. And um, lastly, I have um, just want to thank the voters for all of the um, support of the bond issues. Looking forward to building um, five 
new schools, which kind of gives me a headache. I don't know about you, Dr. Turnquist, but it gives me a headache um, thinking about it because it is a lot to do in this in, uh, in four or five years, but also to let you hear from the children of Florence Elementary and Norris School in a very short one minute and 48 second video um, directly from students about and um, staff around how they, um, and, uh, how they are enjoying their new spaces and what their new spaces look like. So that concludes my presentation, and thank you very much. stress about it being you know 90 degrees or hotter in the classrooms as well so um, so we, you know that impact is going to be huge Well, thank you, Dr. Logan, for the, your presentation and update on the beginning of school, as well as that video um, from the communications department, if I'm correct. Um, uh, does anybody uh, at the table, colleagues, have any questions or comments? Mr. Scanlon? Just had a question. Um, you had mentioned the GPS um, for the school buses. Is that both uh, STA and OPS that have the GPS? I believe so. I think it's yes, it's both. Mm -hmm. yes. And do we have a um, an app available for the parents? I know there was a couple that were in uh, some, uh, I guess, uh, practice or what do you call it, where it's select pilot. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, pilot programs. Is that uh, yeah, what? What is the status on that? I am not, I'm not aware of the answer, but I am going to get that and make sure I present at the next board meeting about the... Um, it's still being evaluated. Okay. It's under okay. pilot right now. Okay. Pilot. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was being offered at some, okay. at some schools. Okay. And then, um, I guess, being your first very mm -hmm. short uh, <laughs> tenure from July until the school started, um, I'm assuming you, you learned some lessons. How, um, what is your plan for lessons learned to communicate that to the next school year that, um, you know, we can build on a positive uh, start to this school year? I think, um, thank you for the question. I think that uh, there are a few things. So I'm going to talk about just um, addressing morale and because um, that to me is really important because it sets momentum and I appreciate uh, Ms. Cassidy's uh, comments about that and yours around the welcome that you talked about. I think that that uh, setting the tone of why we're here and that this is a this is a fun and happy job that we get to do it's not doesn't mean that it's not difficult but that the outcomes are joyful and and happy and that we are for many children the happiest place that they will be all day and so um, I think that that's a part of it and building on that and I, to be honest, I will say that schools have extended it well far beyond what I could have expected in the first year and um, making sure that they are recognized because those kinds of things, success breeds a success. So I think on that note. The second was more, uh, more opportunity to, for, to witness 
um, that to, for the meeting like the one that you witnessed with the executive council working uh, through problem solving um, as a team, uh, identifying what the issues are, um, as you saw we did on the board, and, uh, and then kind of uh, working forward and working backwards to say, okay, this is where we'll need to be in five years. How are we going to get there? And then for each team to realize that they have significant pieces of this second bond. It is much more uh, complicated, lots of um, um, the dreaded word uh, boundary changes and catchment changes for uh, schools, which will be a, a part of it. And um, the, the other kinds of things that go into that, such as uh, curriculum planning, you know, these two high schools, what the programmatic offerings are going to be, and the same thing um, at the elementary uh, level as well. So I think that those are the, the biggest uh, takeaways that I see in terms of the setting the direction for how the team is going to work together, uh, setting the uh, I'm accountability person, and I know I'm going to be held accountable by this board, and uh, the same thing for the team, that not just me holding them accountable, the community is holding all of us accountable, and um, how we hold each other accountable for the pieces that we're supposed to have done, completed, have to coordinate uh, with our teams, uh, and meeting regularly to monitor progress. The last thing I would say about the, uh, the uh, phase two of the bond is we are looking at how internally we um, have a much more, and this is not a surprise to our project manager, so um, uh, we much more, many more internal controls around the, um, the uh, completion of projects so that there will be an individual from the school district who can regularly make the reports to the board in, in detail about how things are going and also to work side by side with our project manager uh, as well. Um, but be, to be looking out for the interest of the dis district as a client um, with our construction firms. Uh, although these we are partners, we are always the client and how we look at uh, the customer service that we're receiving as the client as we go through a significant building uh, phase during the next five years. And I think that that's uh, the, I mean, that's just the way I view even when no matter what vendor uh, we're working with that to make sure that we have very clear lines about uh, customer client relations and expectations for uh, project completion, um, project quality um, as well. So I think that those are the things that um, are things that I have learned during my first uh, 35 days on the job. And uh, I know it seems like longer, but uh, <laughs> uh, but um, I've been trying to be a really good um, a, a, a astute observer of what I'm seeing to ask a lot of questions about that. And I don't think it's that probably remarkable what I'm pointing out. But that, these are things that I know will help us um, have credibility with the voters who authorize this $403 million uh, bond. Anyone else? Well, again, thank you so much for um, a report uh, on the beginning of school. And um, best wishes to our students and staff when they go to school tomorrow, which will be a dry day, hopefully. Um, that is the end of our agenda there. There is a receipt report. It is a CBOC report. I stand corrected there. Uh, I encourage you guys to review that because um, it does have some very helpful information. Vice President America. I move that the Board of Education go into closed session for the protection of the public interest and for the prevention of needless injury to the reputation of individuals to discuss with the superintendent, secretary to the board and legal counsel, personnel and legal advice. There's a motion by Vice President America. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Cassidy. Roll call, please. Snow. Aye. Cassidy. Aye. Hallman? Aye. America? Aye. Perlman? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Scanlon? Aye. Smith? Aye. Eight? Aye. Motion carries. Let me remind, excuse me, let me remind the board that the purpose for closed session is for the protection of the public interest, for prevention of needless injury to the reputation of individuals, to discuss with the superintendent, secretary to the board, and legal counsel. 
personnel and legal advice. Let the record reflect that the board will end the closed session at 735.
there. Let the record reflect that the board came out of closed session at 7.50. Let the record reflect the meeting was adjourned at 7.50.